What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of Falcons in Focus. I'm Scott Baer. That's Tori McElhaney. And I'm really excited to make this yes. next introduction. Yes. It's going to be awesome. Because I get <laughs> to say, for the first time ever, it le because we are recording this on a Wednesday, right. somebody just found out, I can now say, to my left. Not me. Pro bowler, <laughs> Chris Lindstrom. Pro bowler, Chris Lindstrom. How does that sound? Uh, it's it's crazy. It, it, it doesn't feel real. Um, I was I was stunned yesterday when Coach told me. So uh, it's an incredible honor, and just really thankful to uh, to to be lucky enough. Now we heard through the grapevine that there was actually a specific way that Arthur Smith told you about the Pro Bowl. Is that correct, or was someone just pulling our leg? How did he tell you? I, I'm not sure what you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in the middle of our Wednesday practice on a Tuesday, uh -huh. and uh, we just finished the first half of. Uh, really really practice team reps were broken up into two sections just finished the first block and i'm like joking around with lead talking about how we're gonna get our, like our full speed indie work and uh art pulled me aside with him and told us uh told me i was going to the pro bowl so i don't know if that's how you guys found out or there's something circulating the building but i heard that there were some graphics that had been made about chris lindstrom yeah as a pro bowler yeah about tucker fisk as a pro bowler i'm not sure if that made any meetings oh like yeah that. oh yeah that <laughs> okay yeah that's that what we heard yeah that definitely made the uh wednesday meeting <laughs> <laughs> started last year with uh ryan newzel who uh was our practice squad offensive lineman and has been elevated the roster yeah uh he did an incredible job and still does every single day uh giving the looks and mm. uh was was really awesome and so it was kind of it was a joke to him but then also an appreciation for you know, I know we're still joking about it, but it was like, hey, man, like, really nice job. Thank you for everything you did. So, That's nice. February 5th, you're going to be in Vegas for the week for the Pro Bowl games, which I guess is like yeah, a flag they're football different. sort of a You're kind of the first group that has a not game day experience for the Pro Bowl. So, But are you looking are you looking forward to that week? You're going to bench press for the fans or something? Do you know <laughs> what's happening out Go there? Go back to combine. Uh, I really hope not. Don't don't pull my uh, combine bench records. <laughs> I'm probably coming last place uh, of of the group, but yeah, super excited. Uh, I was actually lucky enough last year my brother played in the East West Shrine game, so I was in Vegas a couple days before the Pro Bowl and I was kind of telling myself and my family, you know, it would be really nice to be able to uh, to make it one time and uh, really fortunate enough that I was able to this year. Yeah, I, I mean, you were kind of, you know, joking around about the flag football game and everything, but this is this is kind of a big deal because yeah. this is voted on by players and coaches and fans, mm -hmm. and it really shows that maybe you've gained a lot of respect throughout this league. Like, what does this honor mean to you to get it in a season like this where the offensive line is really doing so well? Uh, it's an incredible honor. Um, and I just want to thank all the fans who voted. Um, really, that meant that meant a lot to me, and I know a lot of people put a lot of time into doing that. So thank you. Um, but first and foremost, like the respect of the guys in my room is is the most important. And so like the four guys I get to take the field with, and really the guys we have in our room and on offense, um, and and the team as a whole is what what's the most. And as long as those guys know that I'm giving everything on every snap, um, and I'm trying to be the best I can be, that's that's most important. But then. Uh, to to get that respect or however uh, from from around the league was truly uh, truly awesome and really means a lot. You know, you get you get drafted. You know, you always want to set team and personal goals, and team goals are always a, above personal goals. But to be able to hit one of these personal goals and milestones, um, really, really, really meaningful. I mean, and that's not the only thing, you know, Pro Bowl year, but also you are the Falcons nominee for Walter Payton Man of the Year. I mean, that in and of itself is I mean, that's a huge deal, huge <laughs> deal. And I know Scott has a printed off copy. I, I, yeah. The, Chris is involved in so many things yeah. that I have to actually read it or I'll never or I will never uh, me uh, memorize it. Also, it's highlighted. It's I highlighted. want everyone to know that, that too. Uh, that's important. And we're going to get <laughs> to all of your work with Best Buddies in a minute. Mm -hmm. But also, he surprised local teachers with a shopping spree. He served meals to families in need through the Ronald McDonald House. He brought a food truck to Flower Branch High School. He uh, had Thanksgiving meals for Atlanta's West Side. He cleaned up parks. He went to children's hospitals. I'm running out of breath. How do you have time for all of this? Because every Tuesday is a big community day for the Falcons. Mm -hmm. And every time you're in the photos <laughs> out there, and that's your one free day, so you give up your one free day essentially every single week to be able to uh, give back 
why do you do that for, for someone whose time is so precious? I wouldn't say that. I mean, I would, the time precious part, um, we, you know, we're super fortunate enough, and I think a, a huge aspect of it is one from Mr. Blank and the standard that he sets of his impact in the community and what he does uh, for Greater Atlanta and really everything that he does. And uh, two, our community relations team is probably, I, you know, they should get an award for how they are compared to people around the league because the communication, the access, and it's made pretty clear from the beginning of OTAs uh, you could go talk to any one of the, the members. And so I went with Kenya and I just t talked to her about uh, different things that I wanted to make an impact on. And then there's team opportunities that are pretty much available. Um, and then there's different things that, you know, she gets to know you or the, you know, the community relations team gets to know you. They present you with different opportunities. And so it's, it really is a great way uh, to spend a Tuesday to break up the routine of the season because the season is such a grind. You know, what What am I going to do with that Tuesday? I'm going to sit at home, watch Netflix, whatever the show <laughs> is at that time. So it's just like it's a really nice way to get out of the house to go uh, help make an impact. And it was really such a learning experience, too, I think. And um, speaking with the different guys of different charities and what they do, it really kind of opens your eyes to the different challenges people face. And uh, I think that was probably my biggest takeaway from, from all of it this year was just – how many how many ways guys make an impact and the different ways of so many areas in life uh, need attention brought to them. It's interesting too because aren't you in the middle of like planning a wedding as well on top of you know everything all else. Of everything else that you're doing? Uh, no, I'm signing off on a wedding. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's a good difference. I'm, I'm in the I'm in the planning process, but I just give the thumbs up. Oh, that sounds great! Like, and, and I'm, it's I'm always a trouble. thumbs up, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And it, I can always sense. Uh, I'm lucky enough. I've been with Maddie for seven years now, so I know when I'm supposed to sign off on something, and when like my <laughs> feedback is actually not wanted. wanted or like actually <laughs> wanted, wanted. So versus not wanted. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's fantastic. During my whole like. Um, wedding planning process, I got one job, one, and oh that God. was the food, which was the best possible one, because then I can just try a bunch of stuff and say, that tastes good, let's yeah. have that, like, <laughs> please bring in the steak. That was yeah. pretty much my only instruction. Yeah. Stacy took care of everything <laughs> else. <laughs> Love it. Oh, man. Now, speaking of cooking and food, yeah. Um, one of the my favorite things that I think you did, and it's on that piece of paper, but you were, you cooked dinner for uh, a breast cancer fighter and her family at the Dazzle and Dine event mm -hmm. for the Falcons. Did you actually cook the meal? Okay, yeah. So there was probably eight of us. Each of us had varying levels of skill and okay. also <laughs> yeah. okay. varying levels of what was required of us. Um, so we all got and got like a 20-minute lesson beforehand. They had a hibachi chef come out. They came out. They taught us, all right, this is how you cut up the vegetables. This is how you cut everything. And we're like, oh, okay. And like like most things, you're like, all right, like right, we'll take a photo of us cooking, and that will be it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went learned and i started the vegetables and the rice and our hibachi chef was at our station he's like uh you're good man like you're good like, <laughs> stop it's fine so it, it was funny though because we did get the one video of i've never done it before and uh mary who i was so blessed to be able to spend the night with um i was able to I toss know, the cucumber yeah. and she was or whatever it was and she was able to catch it so we were one for one <laughs> we settled that's how we're ending the night but um abdullah abdullah anderson he had to cook the entire meal wow <laughs> he cooked the head the whole thing so he cooked it from the rice to the vegetables wow. to to the protein so i mean shout out to him because he did a really really nice job now did y'all vote on who had to make the whole meal or did he volunteer for that uh, no it was kind of just uh luck of the draw there and so <laughs> you're like it's fine i won't i won't do he it he did a much better job than i would have <laughs> For sure. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. Now let, let, let's sink into your involvement with, with the Best Buddies mm -hmm. organization. Give me the origin story about how and why you got involved with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so my agent, uh, Brad Blank, is on the board of trustees for Best Buddies. And so when I first got drafted, uh, people working with people with intellectual developmental disabilities was something that I always wanted to do or, you know, had relationships with people. And my sister also uh, was on the autism spectrum, and so it was always something I was interested in. And so just talking to him and getting uh, getting to know each other th through the process of signing him as an agent and then, you know, just working together, he really introduced me to Best Buddies, and it's been something I was so fortunate that's been brought into my life. Um, and then when I came down here to Georgia, they were really – Best Buddies um, was trying to really expand the southeast region, and Georgia in particular, because Atlanta is one of the top ten major cities in the United States, and um, – 
we just really wanted to grow the programs. And so there's state offices in a lot of different states around the country. Plus, there's also international programs. And so one of the things when we first got drafted here, when, when I first got drafted here, was to bring attention to fundraising for a state office. And so there's, there's awesome, awesome people here working for Best Buddies in Georgia who were able to uh, get the fundraising in the last couple of years for a state office. And so now, really, the mission with it is trying to grow those uh, facilities. So really trying to grow a jobs program and continue to grow different chapters at schools to for uh, more one-on-one -on -one peer interaction. Now, uh, this is a quote from Anthony Kennedy Shriver, who is the founder and CEO of Best Buddies. And it's it's a quote that I think has stuck with me since, since I saw it. But it, he, Anthony said, you know, if it wasn't for Chris Lindstrom, we wouldn't have Best Buddies Georgia. When you hear that, what does that kind of just make you feel? Uh, I, I don't know if that's true because <laughs> <laughs> I mean he, he he might say that and I and I love Anthony, um, but the it's the same thing of of a team on a football field. You see that with these different organizations and really any aspect of life. And there's so many people who work so hard to secure the fundraising for years. And there's so many like uh, I know Emory has a huge program, and I think mm -hmm. uh, they partner with us on the the ticket programs. Um, and there's so many people that put so much effort into it. All really, all I try and do through the Falcons is bring attention and awareness to Best Buddies and all the good that it does for everybody. Um, and I'm super fortunate f for you guys and the Falcons in general to provide that platform uh, to bring awareness to it. So I th again, I think it, it really takes everybody. Mm -hmm. So how did you meet Michael, your your best buddy? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've seen some videos with him. Yeah. Uh, what a like what a charismatic, <laughs> uh, fun guy. It yeah. seems yep. like. Yeah, Michael's the best. And so I got to meet him. My rookie year, I had just broken my foot, and so I had just I was in a boot, so probably six weeks after surgery, um, working with who at the time was the Southeast Region Coordinator, uh, worked with her to do a fundraising, uh, not a fundraising event, it was like a, it was one of these tables where you go around and you're trying to bring people to come work for, for Best Buddies, and so me and Michael were there, and that's when I was first introduced to him. And I think some of the footage of when I first met Michael um, – was used, I think, in the Walter Payton like thing, mm. and so uh, some of those interviews with Fox, and that's when I really first met him, and our relationship continued to grow. He's uh, huge into music, loves classical, like uh, '70s rock, and uh, <laughs> loves movies. So he's he, he's awesome, and so being able to take him on different trips and COVID uh, was challenging for a lot of people with uh, IDD. So uh, hearing what his struggles were and talking with him throughout the pandemic of of the challenges that that everybody was facing at the time, um, but he uh, also he's working at the aquarium. So if oh, you want cool. yeah, so if you want to see him at the aquarium, Michael's at the aquarium. Don't give him too much stress. But, uh, <laughs> my guy, my guy, yep, yeah, he's working at the aquarium. So Maddie went one time, uh, was going around, and and she's hung out with Michael and I multiple times, mm -hmm. and. She got to see him. He was working the dolphin show, and so I, I think oh. normally he works the information desk, but I'm not sure. But she saw him at the Dolphin Show one day. Oh, That's my awesome. goodness. I love it. Just, uh, so I, I've seen this this Man of the Year video that, that, that the Falcons have, like, put out. And, and you're reading letters mm -hmm. from other people. And I just watched it recently. And some of the quotes that stuck out, I, I think Michael actually said this, is that, that, that people don't know how nice you are because of how tough you are on the field. Aww. And then I think Mary said, the world is a better place because of this gentle giant. And I seriously looked up from my desk, and I'm like, I'm not crying. You're crying. Okay. <laughs> like the experience. I, I I know. Like you don't do this for individual accolades, right? right? You you do this to bring awareness. Mm -hmm. But to hear the the impact you're having in that direct and profound way, that must be such a such a moment to hear mm -hmm. back from these people. Yeah, I think one of the most rewarding uh, aspects of everything is being able to build those relationships with people. And so hearing Mary's story and what she's going through and how, you know, my mom's story kind of, there's so much similarity in hearing what her fight and really all those women on the Dazzle and Dine night um, and then Michael and really all the different activities. Uh, I think the relationships was the biggest thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, you, you, go, you do these activities, you're in the season, to take a moment to pause and reflect and the pause and reflect was brought on by the letters and um, it, w it was really, really touching. And, 
incredibly kind words by by everybody and so it really meant a lot and i was told i was reading a christmas card oh were you <laughs> so i was told i was reading a christmas card i came in probably botch had like the worst reading in history like <laughs> snl level bad and they're like no it's good it's good i'm just like okay like usually you guys have a lot higher standards than this but i'm like all right we're good and then then they brought the letters out so i was not i was definitely not expecting it oh wow see there's been a lot of big surprises really over the last month mm -hmm. yeah. um and how about this for a transition speaking of best buddies there you go you are the third offensive lineman to sit in this hot seat chair we've had jake matthews on we've also had your uh your fellow line mate C caleb mcgarry who you've had ties to you were both first yeah. round draft picks back yeah. in 2019 um i'll say this y'all's relationship makes me laugh because you know you're a guy from massachusetts and caleb mcgarry i I'm pretty sure. I don't. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he may have been raised by wolves. We're yeah, not. It's possible. Or maybe a singular grizzly bear. Yeah. <laughs> We're not entirely sure. But y'all's relationship is something that I think is so fun to watch, and um, something that Caleb brought up on the podcast that we had him on. I, I can't remember if you, if it was me or you, that asked him if you had gone bear hunting with him and he said no not yet and the question we have for you is why have you not gone bear hunting <laughs> Caleb McGarry yet uh that is a great question that's something I definitely have to do one time in my life <laughs> and getting to know Caleb is is the best and one thing if you as fans haven't figured out and I know you guys definitely know Caleb is 100% genuinely himself yes. all the time <laughs> true and unapologetically he is himself and I love him for it um and so, yeah, his one of his favorite activities is is hunting. And one of the first times I went over, I think he just bought his house, and I was going over, and all of a sudden I just saw this big bear, like, skin, like, mounted, <laughs> thrown over the railing, like, just hanging there. It's probably still there. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, I know what I'm getting into. And uh, just loved him every day since. And he, I know he spends the off days or, like, the bye week he's gone – He's fishing. He's really a true outdoorsman for sure. Yeah, it, it was fascinating getting to know him on this podcast. And it's interesting, too, because I was actually talking to him this week. And this is like one of the only football questions of this podcast, because we're really not a football based podcast. That's true. <laughs> and so I was talking to Caleb and I was talking to him ab about kind of like the mundane drudgery of being an offensive lineman and how it's the same things right. over and over and over again and he made the comment he was like yeah he was like I mean you get to a point where he's like I'll use the example with Chris and I he was like I almost feel like I know exactly where his eyes are I feel like he knows where my eyes are and it's he's like I know based on what the backer is doing where we're moving and where we're going it's almost mm -hmm. like a twin telepathy type of thing right do you feel that when you're out on the field with him for sure for sure and i think the only way you can build that up is through reps and so I've been incredibly fortunate uh, i kind of you know went mia on him on the first year <laughs> but we've been, we've been three years strong mm -hmm. really playing every single game together and there's a true awareness and appreciation for one another of what his strengths are and what mine are um, and we really talk about it and really work about it. And like you said, offensive line play is really boring. <laughs> and so, like, anytime anybody sees anything in the media, it usually sounds really repetitive from mm -hmm. me or Caleb or really any offensive lineman, but that's just how offensive line play is. And so the fundamentals of it is is so important. But Caleb and I really communicated what that is. And we've seen so many different looks that we, like, like you said, Caleb, and Caleb said, is that, we really know where each other's thought process is. And if we need to make an adjustment, it's really quick. Mm -hmm. And we can say that to each other. And he knows exactly what I mean or what he means. And uh, there's certain times where, like, I'm going to go cut somebody. And I don't even need to tell him that I'm doing that because yeah. he knows that I'm doing that. And so there's a really good sense there. He's got a really good sense, too, if I'm getting beat versus, like, I have a block secured. So to come help me and I have the same thing with him where – um, you've kind of just seen those pictures over time and really fortunate to be able to play with him. So so take me back to the day after the 2019 draft, right? Mm -hmm. Because you come down from Massachusetts. Caleb mm -hmm. comes from the Pacific Northwest yeah. on charter jets. And then I assume that was the first time that you met? No, actually, yeah. So super lucky. Um, to I was fortunate enough to play in the Senior Bowl. Okay. And we were on the same senior bowl team. And so uh, we actually did a community service event 
or something, and I was stuck on a bus with Caleb. And as you guys know, Caleb's a super interesting person. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> not without things to say. No, yes. no, correct, right. So we got sat down with him, talked with him for, you know, pretty much a whole day doing a doing some event, and really started our relationship that way. And then we did a whole week of playing with each other. And, and it's always a fun week and a memorable week. And then, you know, saw him at the Combine. Uh, you know, it's all alphabetical. So Lindstrom, and there might have been somebody between us, but it was just me and him. We were in the same Combine group. So, like, we talked to each other most of the Combine reps, uh, pretty much most of the day, and you're rooting for each other. And then another month goes by before the draft, and uh, I was, you know, fortunate I got drafted. I did the media calls, which I thought were audio, but it ended up being a Zoom, so I was just pacing back and forth from the bottom <laughs> of my house looking <laughs> – <laughs> really, really bad. So like the double chin down here. Double chin, yeah, like yeah. yeah, it was it was really bad. So by 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 the time I finished those very terrible media calls, I was able to go upstairs and to watch like the final five picks of the first round. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, the Falcons have traded back up in the first round. So like, oh, I got really excited. And then when they drafted Caleb, I got really excited on top of that because it was somebody I got to know and got to build a relationship with. Um, and then yeah, like you said, then. And we just continue to grow right from that day on. Wow. So the Lindstrom family, you're not the only offensive lineman. In yeah. The group. No, there's yeah. several. There, as there's a, matter a fact. few of y'all. <laughs> your brother Alec mm-hmm. is, is on uh, Dallas' practice squad, right, yep. at IR. And then your dad played. Yeah, my dad and two and, uncles played and, D-line. And, t- and two uncles played. Being in a football family, like what was that experience growing up around people who understand what you're doing and who have been there before mm-hmm. and have mm-hmm. been through everything that – that, that you're going through now? Uh, it was I, I f- super fortunate, loved my family, and s- the part I'm re- in terms of the professional setting, I really was lucky enough to be in a super loving, supportive home. Right. But then as just in this career aspect in football, um, I wasn't pressured into football all, at all. You know, my older, my older brother is seven years older than me. He played quarterback, and my dad – Took when he got done playing, I think he played three years in the NFL, one in the USFL, and then took like 20 years off of football. And really? so said like, you know, stepped away, did like business and stuff. And then my brother was coming through, and he's like, all right, well, I'll be, I'll get into coaching for him. So he coached our high school, coached my older brother. Uh, so I kind of, since I was four or five years old, I was always around football, and it's always something that I wanted to do. Um, then I started playing in seventh grade. My dad was still coaching, and he. He coached, ended up being like 17 years, uh, coached all three of my, me and my two brothers. Wow. So was, oh, my yeah. gosh. I love that. That's almost exactly like, uh, not to make this about me, but my dad was my high school's football coach for like my whole life up until I was in high school, and he coached me and my two sisters in awesome. softball, and my, my little sister plays golf. And so I completely get that. Yep. What was it like for you to kind of have your dad as your coach during that time? I, I have to say, again, I was really lucky that my dad was was awesome in it. And in the sense of he was a really hard coach on the field and held you to a high standard. And I was – and I think because he played, he had the awareness of the challenges that it brings to. And so there was zero favoritism in it. And if anything, I was held to a harder standard. Yep. Um, <laughs> but then in the same breath, when I got home, everything was done. Right. And, like, he was just dad again. Oh, and cool. so that was – really really cool and I think that environment helped us and one of the funny things though that I think helped like that and it's just knowledge is I was 230 pounds my senior year of high school so I was even last like 215 220 my brother was the same way my brother was only 6263 and he's like, oh, well, if you're going to oh, play, man. well, compared to NFL, you go see <laughs> yeah, Caleb. Right? Like, yeah. So he's, he's like, like you know what? If you want to play Division One college, which my younger brother definitely did, he goes, you're snapping. Like, you're playing center mm. because that's your best chance. And, um, you know, my brother really worked hard and is self-made in a lot of ways. But my dad gave was like, no, you're like, you're playing center. And so that was one of the cool things. And for me, he's like, no, you're not playing defensive end. He's like, I was a stiff defensive end, like, <laughs> not doing it. You're going to play O line. Like, and that's, that's how I got on this path. And looking back on it, he 100% made the right decision. I would probably not be sitting in this chair if I was playing D line. <laughs> <laughs> what were the grocery bills like? Yes. We've asked, uh, Jake we asked, Matthews this we asked question Jake this because well. he had, a, he has a similar kind of uh, mm-hmm. family mm-hmm. setup. Yeah. I can only imagine you went through gallons and gallons of milk <laughs> for sure i don't know i don't know how my parents did it but so i'm one of six so i have my older brother 
uh, my younger brother Alec, and then I have three sisters, um, all of whom are all pretty clumped together in age. So I don't know how my parents did diapers. I don't know how they got <laughs> through that phase. I don't know really how they did any of it, but the grocery bill was, was crazy. We never went out. If we ever went out, it was uh, to McDonald's, and it was always on the dollar menu. Oh, yeah. You could right. never go off the dollar menu. Yep. And so I uh, would always think my uncles were, like, the coolest people in the world, where they were like, you can get a Big Mac or something off the <laughs> dollar <laughs> menu. Fancy. Like, All right, we're going. I've made it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was the biggest thing. We just never went out to eat, always kind of stayed home. Mom would make portions that were, like – so much larger than she would like take a recipe quadruple it <laughs> that, was, that was dinner so if pasta was like one box it was at least four and she did that still hosting and so when we went to college or whatever there was just extra food because she'd built up 15 years <laughs> of, routine of tripling recipes i mean what type of uh like uh in the stands mom was she was she very vocal with you or was she, was she more like came home and it was like you did a great job sweetie no no she was very vocal so <laughs> <laughs> very vocal so my uh my dad and myself and my brothers really kind of a, a lot of my siblings were go watch everybody like in, in another thing i'm really my family's super supportive of everybody so like yeah. i'll go home watch my sister's volleyball mm -hmm. they'll come watch my games all of that's awesome, but we're like go sit in the corner type people, like quiet, like in the back, back, back corner, yeah. like where nobody is, and that's where we hang out. My mom, on the other hand, would be like friends with every single person in the gym, <laughs> sit in the middle, would scream and yell, scream at the refs, scream at you know everything, and all in a supportive, fun way. But uh, right, of course, <laughs> right. She was she was awesome, but. She was definitely a much bigger personality than the rest <laughs> of us. So it was it was funny that my dad would come home and just be like, oh, God. Just. It was like, <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> so funny. My mom's the same way. <laughs> All right. We've hit Tori and I's favorite part of yeah. these podcasts. It's a rapid fire. Oh, boy. High and not very high intensity yeah. uh, section. But I, I just like to bill it that it is. Um, five questions. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets the same questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, give or take. Give or take. Yeah. You're ready. I think so. Okay. okay. Here we go. What is your favorite play of your career? Ooh, favorite play of my career? Mm -hmm. uh, so far in the NFL would be when we played the Jets last year. Uh, we had the touchdown to secure the game, and there's a f video of Jake and I celebrating the end zone, kind of making fun of us. The uh, guys on the team did, but it was a ton of – had a ton of meaning, a ton of uh, – that was probably my most meaningful play uh, in the NFL. Love it. Wow. Well, why did you pick that one? I just think of the experience of being able to travel in London. I'm not a big traveler, but every single, we kind of joke about this too in the offensive line room is like, not a big traveler, but if I'm forced to travel, I have a blast. And then I always <laughs> get mad at myself, like, why don't I do this more often? But uh, so being able to, the, the whole London experience, the fans there were awesome. And then we were playing in a game, we were doing really well. And that, like, that was the finishing, mm -hmm. finishing drive. And so I think so far, that's really kind of been the highlight. So far, hopefully to keep expanding that and yeah. keep playing in meaningful games. Is there a TV show that you love or that you're binging right now? Uh, so I always do like one in-season show. So uh, last year was Criminal Minds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Love Criminal Minds. Started, did the whole entire thing at Criminal Minds. Uh, talking with Marcus, I tried to get into Game of Thrones, but like because of camp and the season. It's hard. Like, it's really, really hard because yeah. you have to sit down and, like, really focus where, like, you get home from work on a lot of these days. You just want, like, a nice, lighthearted, like, story that you can kind of follow. About a ser serial killer. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you can just, like, kind of follow, but, like, if you fall asleep, you it's didn't really miss deal. much. Yeah. yeah. But uh, right now I'm watching Bones. So I'm, like, redoing every single oh, nice. 2000s crime show. So by the time I retire, I'll be out of them. There but you go. I think there's about, like, 150 or 200 of those episodes. So you've a got lot. some time to I work. I mean, there's a lot of Criminal well. Minds episodes. Yeah. And they, they've come back, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, next one. Um, where is – what is your favorite place to eat? Ooh, favorite or place where? to eat. <laughs> Uh, down here, I'd have to say Bare Bones in Buford. Yeah. Is, is yes. my favorite. Uh, That's the good I one. love steak, so huge steakhouse person. Have a great time there every single time. Um, How do you get your steak cooked? 
So I was a medium well. I've worked my way down to medium. I'll never be a medium rare person. <laughs> I understand all the medium rare snobs out there. <laughs> yeah, I get one. it. I get it. I'm one. I'm okay. sorry. I get it. <laughs> I'm medium, so I. Yeah. So I've worked my way down to medium. I'm happy there. Where if it goes medium rare, I'm fine. If they, you know, cook it medium well, I'm also happy. So, you know, kind of little it's best easy. of both worlds yeah. right there. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and expand this category just for you because, okay, then, like, what was your favorite meal that at home got quadrupled? And everybody had. Okay. Uh, chicken pot pie yeah. is a huge oh, yeah, one. That's a good one. Yeah. And so instead of doing like the true pie, like you couldn't do that because she'd have to make like two or three pies. So that'd be like a ton of work. So she would get a, uh, a big, big baking sheet, like the, the, like the different baking sheet, do it, and then would drop biscuits on top of it. So oh, you could just smart. have a ton oh, of. I've had that. So that's instead, smart. Yeah, so instead of having like just a crust on top, you just had biscuits. So you could just cut up or scoop a biscuit or cut it off. And huh. You're going to have to send that recipe yeah, to us. Yeah, I, I sure. feel like uh, yeah. we got to get at after that one. Who is the fa- or which falcon do you hang out with the most? Do I hang out with the most? Yeah. Uh, definitely the offensive lineman. Probably. Uh, Drew Dahlman, Hennessy, mm-hmm. News, and Caleb, probably mm-hmm. the four equally. <laughs> kind of yeah. that. Did you go uh, fishing with, with everybody, in with the Seattle? linemen? So, no, actually I didn't. So they did that. That was a did super fun time. Did you hear about it? I, everybody heard about <laughs> it. They actually, it, it was really cool, and the hotel staff were awesome. So they brought the salmon back mm-hmm. to the hotel, and the uh, they filleted it and everything for everybody and kind of served it as one of the meals. So I thought that was uh, a really cool thing, but we were able to that day go to the military base. That's in, right. Yeah, that's right. In mm-hmm. Seattle, and that was really, really fun experience. I actually, fit in the back of a, a Black Hawk helicopter. Whoa. So that, yeah, it was it was fun getting to talk with everybody there. Um, but I did miss the fishing trip. It looked like a blast, <laughs> yeah. though. It did. I, I, I'm sure offensive line groups are generally tight because you guys have to do boring things over and over and again, and only you guys understand it, right? Right. right. But this group seems like it. Ge- I mean, you guys play well together on the field. It seems like you genuinely like each other's company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that kind of how that position group is? I mean, like, mm-hmm. describe what it's like in those meeting rooms. Is it raucous? Is it serious? Is it making fun of each other? Like, what's the dynamic there? I think there's a little bit of everything. And um, super fortunate. I really think we have truly one of the best offensive line rooms. You know, performance, you can say whatever it is, and we're not the people who evaluate that. But in terms of culture, I, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better room that has better culture uh, than we do. And um, that's one, the testament to the quality of guys that are in there, but then uh, our coaches, too, of what they've set in there. But there's a real, like, we we don't take it too seriously. Mm-hmm. There's not, uh, there's definitely not a negative culture, and I know you guys know Led. And uh, yeah. for the fans who don't, he's probably the most upbeat, positive, high-energy yeah. people uh, that there is probably on the planet. And so uh, when he's pushing that energy – and we have great guys every single day that we know what's expected of us, and they go out there and do that. And so when you have guys who are just meeting the standard every single day, you don't have to worry about that stuff. You can have all the other fun, like, kind of, you'd say, like, luxuries, I guess, in the mm-hmm, sense yeah. of you can have fun in a meeting room, but also work. So, like, we can have a blast in there for 20 minutes, but then when it's time to focus, everybody's dialed in really focused. And so when you have that super healthy combination of having fun and having a fun workplace environment but in the same sense of everybody's a professional and really loves what they're doing and wants to be the best at it and wants to be the best for the team that's when like great things can happen and so that's why we're super fortunate yeah something about uh led as well i was talking to him the other day and he uh he has the loudest voice mm-hmm. of someone that I think I've ever met. He, like, projects his voice in a way that I don't know if I've ever – like, I was talking to him, and I was literally sitting from me to you from him, and he was yelling, and I was like, <laughs> whoa. Yeah, But he was yelling a, nothing but, like, positivity, Nothing though. but He's so Chris positive. is the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh, man. Well, we're going to wrap up. Mm-hmm. Last rapid fire, kind mm-hmm. of not rapid fire yeah. question. What is your biggest pet peeve? So this is something, this is like the ultimate icebreaker question. I think it's been (laughs) rotated on every single time. Um, Unless something better comes to my head, and uh, this is something my fiancé will give me flack for. She is a big lover, and this is funny. I just make fun of her. It doesn't even bother me anymore because it's like, it's so comical. Like, I'll order a drink. So, like, I'll order a Coke or something like that. And I'm like, do you want anything? No, I'm good. Water. 
Takes oh. a sip of it before I even take a sip of it. I'm like, I would have just ordered you one. Like, Wait a minute. Yeah. And so, you wanted the water. Yeah. I love her, and she'll laugh about this, but notorious, <laughs> like, can I have a bite of your food? I'm like, uh, sure. Do you want a bite of mine? No, I would have ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a great way to wrap it up with Chris Lindstrom mm -hmm. on the latest episode of Falcons in Focus. Do what you all do. Rate, review, subscribe to the Falcons podcast network. But even more important than all that, Participate in the Walter Payton Man of the Year Charity Challenge, a social media campaign designed to support and promote Chris Lindstrom. You can vote for Chris on Twitter by using the hashtag WPMOY challenge, followed by Lindstrom or at C underscore Lindstrom 63. I can't believe I did all that. You did right. it. Well done. Miracle. Chris, thank you so much for yes, the time. Really uh, appreciate it. And we're going to have another awesome guest next week. See ya.